Kevin Bartsley and his 12 years old son Garrett were camping on a Boy Scout trip at Cuberent Lake of Utah in August of 2004. This lake is close to Uinta Mountain in the Wasatch National Forest of Northern Utah. This lake is in elevation of 10,200 feet. On the east side of the lake, there is a steep mountain which reaches to 11,000 feet and the other side of the mountain is a steep cliff. On south of the lake, there is another mountain which reaches to 11,300 feet. Two thirds of the lake is surrounded by large mountains, so the lake sits in somewhat of a bowl. The entry and exit point of the lake is on the west side. The entire area has lots of lakes and mountains in it. The father and son woke up in the morning of August 20th to go for fishing. There was a still dew on the ground. Kevin and Garrett walked approximately 200 yards from their campsite to the lake. As Kevin was rigging the pole for Garrett, Garrett slipped into the water and got his pants and shoes wet. After some time of fishing and not catching anything, Garrett told his father he's going back to the camp to change his socks. Kevin watched Garrett as he took the correct path to the camp until he lost the sight of him in the trees. Kevin knew there was a group of boys waking up in the camp and that Garrett wouldn't be alone. After 15 to 20 minutes, Kevin realized he hadn't seen his boy. So he walked back to the camp and immediately realized Garrett is not in the camp. He let the other leaders know and ran back to the lake shouting his son's name. After not having any success, they notified the authorities and a massive search was started. It was over an one hour walk to the closest road from the location where Garrett was disappeared. After a short period of time, the sheriff asked FBI for assistance. Searchers found a Nike sock in field of boulders around half a mile from where Garrett was last seen. Garrett's mom confirmed the socks belonged to Garrett. The day the boy went missing, a heavy storm started in the area with freezing rain, hail and snow at higher elevation. Law enforcement stated there was no evidence of Garrett's being abducted. They believed Garrett was lost going back to the camp and later died from exposure. An one hour hike to the closest road makes the abduction idea unlikely, unless the abductor was strong and could move fast. It's really hard to be lost in this location. Remember, this lake sits on a small plateau in a half bowl setting. It's hard to believe how a 12 years old can be lost if you look at the geological survey map of the region. Half the lake is surrounded with very steep mountain which he couldn't climb and the other half has a steep decline to the Weber River. He knew he didn't climb up or down to get to his fishing spot. It's an 800 feet dropped over a small mountain down the southwest side of the lake to even get to the point to go down the river. It's very unlikely he took that route. Remember, searchers found Garrett socks half a mile in a boulder field. What was he doing there? He knew he didn't pass a boulder field to get to his fishing spot. Garrett Bardsley was never found. Avan Thompson was an 8 years old disabled boy who went to camping with a group of students and teachers from his school for disabled kids in May of 2006. The camping ground was northwest of Cannon City of Colorado at an elevation of 7200 feet. On Saturday morning of May 27th, a teacher finished feeding Avan and told him to wait for the group to clean up. While Avan was waiting, somehow he disappeared. Once the camp realized he was missing, everyone started shouting his name and a search was immediately started. It wasn't long after when sheriff showed up. There were bloodhound dogs, airplanes, helicopters on the scene searching for Avan. 
The searchers did find some footprints in the first two days but didn't have success in finding Avon. In the middle of the fourth day, the searchers thought they heard something. They called Avon's name and he responded. He was found in a cave five miles from the location where he disappeared. He was in a good condition and only had some scratches on his body but was missing one shoe. He was taken to a hospital and doctors said he was good despite being out for four days. People tried to ask questions from Avin but it appeared he couldn't recall what happened to him during the four days. He did tell them one night he slept in a tree, one night under a log and one night in a cave. He also said the day he disappeared a crow flew up next to him and he followed it from camp. Searchers stated from the footprints it appeared Avon walked for 11 miles. Studies show children 7 to 9 years old usually are found within 4.5 miles. Avon was found over 5 miles from where he disappeared but he walked over 11 miles. Sixteen years old, Lynn Olsen and her twin brother lived with their mother in Salt Lake City of Utah. Their father worked in a ranch away from home. The kids were staying at their grandparents' ranch on Green River Lakes north of Pinedale. This ranch was close to the ranch the father was working on, so the kids were enjoying their time close to their father in June of 1963. This area is beautiful with large green open meadows coupled with huge cliffs and deep valleys. There are lots of lakes in this area and there is a river that borders the wilderness. On June 28, Lynn took a walk near the river. When she didn't return, grandparents called the authorities for help. The sheriff department brought in divers to the scene to search the river and lakes for Lynn but they had no success. Right after Lynn disappeared, snow started to fall and continued for two days, which slowed down the effort. Lynn was only wearing light summer clothes. On July 29th, one month after Lynn went missing, family members were still looking for her when they found a pile of her clothes amongst the trees 200 yards from the river she was taking a walk. Family members said this was the clothes she was wearing at the time of her disappearance. The location that Lynn went missing is an extremely remote part of the Bridger National Forest. Searchers never found any blood or struggle seen in the area that showed a mountain lion or grizzly bear had attacked Lynn. The area is so remote that the idea of a serial predator was waiting with a vehicle to abduct her seems impossible. Lynn Diana Olsen was never found.